This is Johnny Ceruti with another Mig Mag special report. You know, flat earth has become quite a cottage industry now. But only a select few are allowed to go on the talk circuit. Actors, comedians, movie producers, video gamers, and cross-dressing yoga instructors. Oh, let's not forget the computer programmer who tells you that it's the ambrosia of health to drink your own urine. When these flat earth experts aren't trying real hard to discredit themselves, they seem like they're trying pretty hard to avoid the ultimate questions, such as, who is behind all this and why? I can imagine that would be the first thing that stumps someone on the outside looking in. The best thing you can do to be laughed at is to say the earth is flat, or that the best expert you can pull up is a yoga instructor or a comedian. If there is an ultimate evil authority that is ruling the world from behind the scenes, would it not stand to reason that they would leak the truth in order to steer it? Well, in great detail, Meg and I have already answered these questions, and only one answer makes sense. Who has a vested interest in fabricating a false reality? Certainly no single government does. And you might be able to make a partial case by saying that immersing people in a false reality enslaves them. It does, but it doesn't. That only works with the pieces of the puzzle that we give you. The Vatican is at war with humanity in general, but specifically with Christians and the Bible. It always has been. That's why I've been so deeply disturbed with Christian leaders, such as Michael Heiser, Ken Ham, and Kent Hovind, that put such great effort into shoring up this false reality matrix. A flat young earth turns the Bible back into a science textbook. Why wouldn't you want that? Why would you instead try to force dinosaurs into the Garden of Eden or onto the Ark with Noah? And by the way, none of those gentlemen know how to say the word Jesuit or Vatican, which further raises my suspicion. The Vatican has an overwhelming interest in discrediting the Bible, because if you throw the Bible out as an authority on your eternal soul, who else rises to mind to take the place of the Bible but the Pope of Rome? It's amazing that not a single Protestant or Christian today sees the Pope as Antichrist when no more than a few centuries ago it was the only understanding. A great number of people have been painted as the Antichrist, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, but they just don't fulfill the prophecies. For instance, in Matthew 24, starting with verse 3, it states, Now as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your return, of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and they will deceive many. At what point did Napoleon Bonaparte said he was Jesus Christ? Can you imagine a Muslim boogeyman doing that? Meanwhile, when the popes of Rome sit in what they call the chair of St. Peter, they claim to wield full authority in heaven, on earth, and even in hell. This is the meaning of the three-crowned tiara that used to be quite commonly seen on the heads of popes. When a pope sits in the chair of St. Peter, he speaks and writes as God himself, using capital plural pronouns. Revelation 17 says, Then one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her corruption. Throughout the Vatican's history, through today, world leaders seek the papal blessing openly. And as we've told you many times, they are actually empowered and emplaced by the Vatican and her many secret agents of insurgency, both clergy and laymen. Revelation 17, verse 3, John says, 
The angel carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup of abominations and the filthiness of her corruption. Those verses so obviously speak of the Catholic Church, they had to be rewritten and erased from Christian and Protestant understanding. Let me pick up from my book Illuminati Unmasked, starting on page 185. With Rome so clearly depicted as the fourth and final beast of both Daniel and Revelation, Jesuits needed to disconnect Christians from that interpretation, and they used praetorism and futurism to do it. Praetorism is the idea that most of prophecy has already taken place, and it was concocted by a Jesuit, Luis del Cazar. But Praetorism wasn't accepted by large groups of Protestants, and an alternative interpretation of the end times was put forth. Futurism is more appealing in that it acknowledges that much of prophecy is yet future. However, it distracts from the fourth beast and paints the Antichrist as a man who suddenly appears just before the tribulation and who stands alone apart from any organization or system. It, too, was fabricated by a Jesuit, Francisco Ribera. Rarely do Jesuits work their mischief in the open, and they take particular pleasure in hiding behind Jews. Such was the tactic of Jesuit Manuel Diaz Lacunza, who tried to rewrite prophecy, claiming that the tribulation would be a future short period of time before which Christ would return and whisk away his followers. This is known as the pre-tribulation rapture. But for more ammunition, we'll return to Revelation 17 and starting in verse 5. On the harlot's forehead, a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. No entity more adequately fulfills this than the Vatican. No entity in existence has slaughtered more Christians than Rome. John Fox's Acts and Monuments, later renamed Fox's Book of Martyrs, was such an exhaustive condemnation of Rome's tortures and murders of Christians that it was secretly rewritten several times to soften the blow. This is covered in Revelation 6, verse 9. When the Lamb opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood? on those who dwell upon the earth. The Vatican ruthlessly pursued both Christians and their Bibles, and Fox's Book of Martyrs chillingly describes how John Wycliffe's followers, called Lollards, who traveled the countryside reading from their Bibles and spreading the gospel message, were captured, had their Bibles tied around their necks, and burned alive. Why are there Christian experts in the flat earth community who put so much effort into denying this. Take my friend Rob Skiba. Rob is successful, well-known, and in very high demand as a public speaker. In fact, with a recent panel of other well-known and accepted flat earth experts from Patricia Steer to Mark Sargent and the Jesuit-trained Jaron Jaronism Campanella, Rob admitted that he was actually trained to be a public speaker, but doesn't say who it was that trained him and why. As a public speaker, I'm trained to try as much as possible to understand my audience and relate to my audience, so kind of feel out where they are. Recently in Canada, Rob did an excellent job of exactly what I'm warning you about. Taking this evidence, spinning some, and coming to a quick, abrupt halt before he can answer your questions. Who? Why? So what is all this, what's the end game in all this? You know, what what do we do with all this information? Well, that brings me to the final point here. Um, A spinning globe, 666, and the great deception. 
something interesting. When the disciples came to Jesus and they said, hey, you know, what's the last days going to be like? What's it going to be like in the end times? First thing out of his mouth, he says, let, he says, take heed that no man deceives you. Let no man deceive you. First thing he said. And if you look up that word that I have highlighted there in red, deceive, it's Strong's number 4105. It's pleneo. It means to lead astray, to deceive. Uh, properly go astray, get off course, to deviate from the correct path, circuit, or course, roaming into error, wandering, passive, misled. It's the root word of the English term planet. Well, that's a great point, Rob. But is our spinning globe Earth cosmology the full extent of the great deception? Or are you too a deceiver? Why would you not give better context for Matthew 24? Don't you think the Christians in your audience would like to know who and why? Those are questions that even non-Christians are asking. Meanwhile, no authority has more adequately or arrogantly outed itself as the Antichrist the way the popes have. It was Innocent III who reigned at the turn of the 12th century, who with vigor began to use the phrase Vicar of Christ to speak of himself, the supreme sovereign over the church and the world. Specifically, he stated all things on earth and in heaven and in hell are subject to the Vicar of Christ. Erased from history are the Vatican Crusades against Christians in Europe, slaughtering the Valdensians, the Albigensians, and the Vaudois. Their outrage against the Pope is captured in Fox's Book of Martyrs, whereupon we, with all our posterity, have to understand that be the reasons and arguments wherewith the Antichrist of Rome is wont to uphold the impious seat of his abomination, who now has come to such excess and profundity of all kinds of wickedness that all justice, equity, and verity are set aside, and he seeks the defense of his cause by no other method than only force and violence, terror and oppression, and the shedding of blood. End quote. A vicious beast has enslaved you, my friends. You need to know who it is and how to fight back. But don't look to Rob Skiba. He will twist the very Bible itself to protect that same beast. If you ask Rob Skiba who to fight, he'll tell you Nimrod and Apollo. Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians 2. He's talking about the coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, the beast system. The beast is known by the number 666, right? So he's talking about this lawless one, this beast, this Antichrist, that will be accompanied with all power of Satan. He will use every kind of power, including miraculous signs and lying wonders, and every type of evil to deceive those who are dying, those who refuse to love the truth that would save them. For this reason, so that they will be believe a lie, then all who have not believed the truth, but have taken pleasure in unrighteousness, will be condemned. So if you look at the context of what's being said here, he's saying, because you do not have a love for my truth, and you would rather follow the truth of Apollo than the other ones, fine, have it your way. I'll turn you over to a reprobate mind. Apollo didn't train the presidents and prime ministers all over the world, but the Jesuits did. From Donald Trump in America, to multiple generations of Trudeaus in Canada, to the president of France, who began dating his drama teacher at his Jesuit high school, and she actually left her family to marry him, even though she's decades older. Is it Apollo or Nimrod, Rob, that is repeatedly coming to the headlines for raping children and getting away with it? By giving cover to the great harlot, you, my friend, Share her guilt. So if you want to go the other route from goo to you by way of the zoo, the zoo by way of the zoo from an exploding dot, well, you're going to go off into sheer madness in that direction. Rightly does Rob mock the Big Bang Theory, but he forgets to tell you who came up with it. Georges Lemaitre, a Jesuit-trained Roman Catholic priest. Did you know that? Why is a Catholic priest running to the aid of Darwin and dinosaurs. As good people ask the question, if the complexity of life occurred by random chance, where did it all start? And a Jesuit trained Catholic priest gives them the answer? A ludicrous one at that. 
First there was nothing and then it exploded. Why? Because the spinning globe Darwinian dinosaur Earth serves their purpose in discrediting the Bible. And by giving them cover, Christians, like Rob Skiba, join them in the deception. And in my early research that led into the publishing of my first book, Babylon Rising, I spent a lot of time looking into this character right here, Nimrod. This one world leader who set up a one world government to destroy God in Genesis chapter 11. And I came to realize through the research of other people especially that he is the Antichrist of Scripture. Scripture tells you point blank that he comes from the bottomless pit. The beast comes from the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 17. It's an open book test. So I ask people, where is the Antichrist coming from? Open book test, Revelation 17. He comes from the bottomless pit, which means he's not coming from Kenya or Hawaii or New York or the Vatican or anywhere else that you always hear some guy out there preaching. Rob brings you purposefully and specifically to the very portions of Scripture that clearly point towards Rome as Antichrist and then spins it back to Nimrod? Did Nimrod wear scarlet and purple and get drunk on the blood of the saints? A Czechoslovakian Catholic priest named Jan Hus attempted to speak out against the excesses, corruptions, and outrages of his own hierarchy. Holy Roman Emperor Sigismund of Hungary, who had been installed by the papacy, convened the Council of Constance to address the claims of this upstart priest. He gave his personal writ of safe passage to Jan Hus, and upon arrival, the very guards that stood watch over him in travel turned on him and arrested him on the spot. It was brought before the cardinals that Jan had said, surely even at this day is the malice and the abomination, the filthiness of Antichrist revealed in the Pope. The Pope is the true Antichrist of whom it is written that he sits in the temple of God among the people where Christ worshipped. Were statements like these and several others this courageous Catholic priest was burned alive, not by Apollo, not by Nimrod, but the Catholic Church. Before he was burned, he proclaimed, I trust in God that he will send after me those that shall be more valiant, and there are alive at this day that shall make more manifest the malice of this Antichrist, and shall give their lives to the death for the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 100 years, God will raise up a man whose calls for reform cannot be suppressed. 98 years later, a young Augustinian monk named Martin Luther nailed 95 theses to All Saints Cathedral on All Saints Day, November 1st, in Wittenberg, Germany. And it is Martin Luther who nailed the lies and deceptions of Christian public speakers like Rob Skiba. It was Luther who stated... O oh Christ, my Lord, look down upon us. Bring upon us your day of judgment and destroy the brood of Satan in Rome. There sits the man of whom the Apostle Paul wrote in Second Thessalonians 2, that he will oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, that man of sin, that son of perdition. What else is papal power but sin and corruption? It leads souls to destruction under their own name, Lord. I hope that day of judgment is soon to dawn. Things can and will not get worse than they are at this time. The papal see is practicing wickedness to new heights. He suppresses the law of God and exalts his commandments above the commandments of you. Is not this to sit in the temple of God, to profess himself to be ruler of the whole church? What is the temple of God? Is it stone and wood? Did not Paul say the temple of God is holy? Which temple? You are. To sit, what is it? But to reign, to teach, and to judge. Who from the beginning of the church has dared to call himself master of the whole of Christendom, but the Pope alone? Who is Nimrod sitting in the power of Babylon? Martin Luther knew. As he wrote in First Principles, nothing else than the kingdom of Babylon and the very Antichrist, for who is the man of sin and son of perdition, 
But he who by his teaching and his ordinances increases the sin and perdition of souls in the church, while he yet sits in the church as if he were God, all these conditions have now for many ages been fulfilled by papal tyranny. The papacy is none other than the kingdom of Babylon and the violence of Nimrod, the mighty hunter. The papacy is a general chase led by the Roman bishop to catch and destroy souls. End quote. So when good people come looking for answers and men like Rob Skiba claim the author of the great deception is Apollo or Nimrod, he is actively giving cover to the very same bloodthirsty harlot who wove our spinning globe earth Darwinian dinosaur false reality matrix. And you, Rob, along with all those like you, will share in her judgments. And that time is coming faster than you expect, my friend. This has been Johnny Sirucci for another Mi'kmaq's.